Okay, now we're going to start blending some algebra concepts and some geometry concepts. We're going to go back to factoring. And now way back, we learned some special factoring pairs. And if I had a quantity squared or a quantity subtracted, it always would foil out, if I think about doing foil on this, a plus b times a plus b, first two terms, outside terms, inside terms, last terms. Combine outside and inside, and I get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, foiling is no big deal. But if you, when we're factoring, remember we used to do trial and error and you would do your two parentheses and figure out what fit in where. If you learn these patterns, we can factor much more quickly. So I'm going to foil this next problem and I'm going to do it very differently because I want you to see the pattern. So I'm going to have w plus 3 times the quantity w plus 3. First two terms, w squared, plus outside terms, 3w, plus inside terms, 3w, plus last terms, 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. Now, instead of combining 3w and 3w to get 6w, I'm going to write 2 times 3w plus 3 squared. Now, it's still the exact same answer, but if I look at this, very carefully, it now looks like a squared plus 2 times a b plus b squared. And so I would know that this would factor into the square of the first term plus, because whatever is here is my sign, the square root of the last term squared, which is in fact where we started. So let's look at this next example, which is already a trinomial. Let's think if we can rewrite it in terms of our pattern. So I'd have y squared minus 2 times 4y plus 16 could be written as 4 squared. This now looks like a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, one of those patterns. That pattern factors into the square root of the first term, y, middle sign, the square root of the last term, the quantity squared. Can't read that. y minus 4, the quantity squared. And if you FOIL it, you'll end up with y squared minus 8y plus 16. So if we look at this example over here, what would go in this blank? Well, if I think about this as x squared minus 2 times 5x plus 5 squared, I see it meets my pattern, and the square root of the last term is what goes in there, and so I know that a 5 would go in there. Now, numbers don't always behave like we want. This completing the square is a really useful tool for solving for x. That's not how we are going to use it, but that's how you will use it in Algebra 2. So sometimes if I can make numbers fit patterns and behave the way I want, I can do things with them. If I look at x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0, 7 isn't a perfect square, which is what all my other examples have been. So I want to rework this problem so it is a perfect square and I can package it back up into that quantity squared scenario. So my first step, add or subtract the constant, that's the one without a variable, away from the variables. So I'm going to have x squared plus 6x equals 7. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Now remember that factor of 2 that was in every one of those examples. This is what we're trying to do. I'm trying to make 
that a plus b the quantity squared. This factor of 2 is going to come into play right now. I'm going to take 1 half of the x term. So in this case, my x term is 6. And I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to take 1 half of the x term. So half of 6 is 3. I'm going to square it, 3 squared, and I'm going to add it to both sides. Because remember, golden rule of algebra, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So 1 half of the x term, square it, add it to both sides. Now, what you've created on this left side is something that will factor perfectly into our x plus or x minus quantity squared. So it will factor into x plus 3, the quantity squared. Combine like terms on the right, 16. If we were in Algebra 2, we would go ahead and solve, but we are not going to worry about solving right now. So let's whoops, look at another example. So first step, subtract your constant away to the other side. Now, I like to write my problems when I do completing the square with a blank in it to remind myself I need to add something to both sides. So I'm going to look at this value right here. 1 half of 4 is 2. And then I square it on both sides. This side right here now fits the x plus 2, the quantity squared. Combine like terms, it's going to equal 3. If you just want to test it for a minute and think about x plus 2 times x plus 2, first two terms, inside terms, outside terms, last terms, you can see that you are exactly what you made right up there. So we've not changed our problems, we've just moved our numbers around. So what does this have to do with circles? Well, that quantity squared piece shows up in our circle equation. Sometimes our circle equations aren't packaged nice and neatly for us, and we need to put them back into that vertex center form so we know what the center is and what the radius is. So here's an equation of a circle that's all mixed up. We're still going to subtract away any constant. My constant is 9. So I'm going to do x squared minus 4x plus y squared minus 6y equals negative 9. The only thing that's going to change now is I have to complete the square twice. I have to do it once with my x and once with my y. So I'm going to group everything. Reorder it if you have to. I'm going to have uh, x squared minus 4x, my first group, plus y squared minus 6y. There's my second group, and that's going to equal negative 9. Now I have to do two steps of completing the square. So I'm going to write my variables in here. Put my blank in, do my y's, put my blank in. That's going to equal negative 9 plus the two values I'm going to add. So let's complete the square. 1 half of 4 is 2. Add 2 squared to both sides. 1 half of 6 is 3. 3 squared to both sides. Now, rewrite it in factored form. So that means collapse this down. So I'm going to have x minus 2, the quantity squared, plus y minus 3, the quantity squared. That will be equal to, combine all these like terms, it equals 4. This is now my equation of a circle x minus h, the quantity squared, plus y minus k, 
quantity squared equals r squared. So my center of this circle is at 2, 3, and my radius, square root of 4, which is 2. Let's look at two more examples. x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 2y plus 4 equals 0. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. Now I'm going to group and leave my spaces. So I've got x squared minus 4x plus something plus y squared plus 2y plus something is going to be equal to negative 4 plus something plus something. Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared. Half of 2 is 1, 1 squared. This means this will factor into x minus 2, the quantity squared, plus y plus 1, the quantity squared, equal to negative 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 1. So my center is at 2, negative 1, and my radius is at 1. Whoops, equals 1. And the last example. Now this one is an extra challenge. So, 4, let's subtract away our constant, 4x squared minus 16x plus 4y squared minus 24y is equal to negative 51. Now at this point, I don't like all those numbers in front of particularly my x and my y. I'm going to divide everything by 4. It's going to make a fraction on the right, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to say x squared minus 4x plus 4y squared minus 6y is equal to 51 divided by 4, negative 12.75. We would hope that things would divide out evenly, but for the sake of completing the square, it's easier to do it this way. I'm going to group and leave my space. So I have x squared minus 4x plus something plus, oops, when I divided out my 4, I forgot it, plus y squared minus 6y plus something is equal to negative 12.75 plus something plus something. So half of 4 is 2, 2 squared. Half of 6 is 3, 3 squared. This is going to factor into x minus 2, the quantity squared, plus this will factor into x minus 3, the quantity squared is equal to negative 12.75 plus 4 plus 9, 0.25. So my center is at 2, 3. My radius, I'm going to show you a cool trick. 0.25 is 1 fourth. The square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. That is the lesson for today. Good luck with your homework.